Hello, so welcome to the second video in the new quick tip series. So in this video, I'll be showing you how you can set up and run ragdoll physics on any object in Spark AR so that you can make your filter more convincing and interactive. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here's a scene that I set up in Cinema 4D. Now it's not necessary that you use Cinema 4D itself. You can use any other application like Blender, Maya, or anything that you're comfortable with. Now in this scene over here, I have a face mesh. Now I downloaded this uh, from the Spark AR official site. I link this in the description below. Now I'll be just using this as a point of reference to place around my models. So in this case, my model uh, that I'm gonna be setting up for the ragdoll is this cone over here. Now it's a basic cylinder that I just scaled down. So before moving to Spark AR, we need to set up a couple of things over here. So there are two ways of doing this. Now, if you don't know anything about rigging, the first way and the easiest way I would say is to by uh, placing the pivot point somewhere where uh, you would want the object to rotate around. So in this case, uh, I've set up uh, the pivot point over here at the base, the center of the base, so that whenever I rotate the object in Spark AR, for, exa for example, it rotates around only that point. And the other way of doing this or a more correct way of doing this is through setting up joints. Now for any ragdoll to work, uh, it needs joints. So what we can do for this object right here is we can uh, basically rig it. So over here under the character, I'll just choose a joint tool and let's go to the side view over here. Now it's a good practice to minimize the use of joints as much as you can. Now a good number to stick with is four. Just try not to go above four because uh, that sometimes can glitch out the models while uh, the Spark Air is running in real time. After that, I'll just delete the root and just uh, drop them into the model. And I'll just uh, go to character commands and bind. So this is gonna be binding our joints with the uh, model. So over here you can see the weights uh, produced by each joint and then I'm just gonna smooth it out. And so that should be it. Now let's see if it works. So I'll just select one and rotate. So you can see it works. So right now you can see that each joint has their own uh, kind of positional value and rotation on uh, over here in the coordinates. Now good practice is to zero them out. So I'll just select everything and uh, freeze. So that way everything is uh, set to zero. And I'll do the same for the, uh, the object itself. So I'll freeze everything. Fine, that's looking good. All right, so with that done, let's go ahead and go to file export and select GLTF. Now by default in Cinema 4D you won't find this. So there's a plugin that you can download for free. I'll leave that in the description below. So what I can do is I'll just, uh, I already exported this before. I'll just delete that and uh, save it again. Over here in the export options, we don't have to do much except uh, make sure that export as binary or GLB is checked and press OK. So that's uh, exported. Now let's go ahead and uh, set up the scene in Spark AR. All right, so here we have the model that I imported from Cinema 4D. And if your scale is a bit off, you can always scale it up or down uh, and try and matching with the original uh, face mesh on in Spark AR. Now I'll anyway go ahead and delete this uh, copy that I imported from Cinema 4D and so that we are left with uh, just the spike over here. Now anyway, with that done, let's go ahead and uh, set up some things in the patch editor. Now over here, I have the patch editor. If you don't see this, you can always click on view and uh, show hide patch editor. Let me change the view to 2D. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and expand the group so that uh, we can expose all the joints. And uh, I'll just go ahead and select everything and uh, click on this arrow right beside the rotation. So that's going to be bringing in the rotational uh, coordinates for the joints. And I'll just go ahead and arrange them. And also we need to import some uh, data from the face tracker. Now, if you don't have the face tracker, you can always click on add object and add a face tracker. So click on that and over here, right next to patch, there's a create button, uh, press that and add a producer patch. So that's going to be adding a bunch of patches. Now this is going to be exporting uh, 3D position, the 3D scale and the 3D rotation of uh, your face. All right, so with that done, let's go ahead and add in an unpack node. And we can use that to expose the uh, 3D rotation into uh, each individual axis. So over here in the 3D rotation, I'll just import that to unpack. And I'll also add in a pack node at the end. All right, so for our ragdoll to work, we only need uh, two patches basically. So one's gonna be a delay node and one's gonna be a subtract like that. And let's go ahead and place them in this order where the delay comes first and the subtract in the second. So we also need to uh, duplicate this. Uh, this is for the x-axis. 
Uh, so we also need to duplicate this pair for the y and the z. So let's go ahead and copy paste that uh, two times. So for the x-axis, let me just go ahead and put that in the first delete. And I'll also do the same for the uh, subtract. So I'll take the x-axis and put that into the first input of our subtract node. And for the second input over here, I'll bring in the uh, output from the delay, like so. So this is the arrangement basically that we have to do for the other two pairs. So you can see the pattern which we are uh, connecting these. And once that's done, we can uh, arrange everything. I mean, we can plug everything back to the pack. So what we can do right now is connect the pack to the joint rotations. So let me just go ahead and do that. If I just connect this to the joint, you can see that uh, suddenly it disappeared. Now it didn't disappear, it just went uh, behind. The orientation is uh, uh, wrong. So what we need to do is we need to uh, put in an add node and uh, let me just add in the add node and change this to a vector three. So what we have to do is basically we have to copy paste the uh, values that's uh, in the joints to the add node. Now we zeroed out all the values of the joints in Cinema 4D, but still it uh, imports some values into Spark Air. So to fix that, we can uh, just copy the uh, value and uh, put it in the appropriate uh, coordinate. And after that, I'll just connect all the add nodes back to the patches, uh, which have the same value. Now that's done. So let me just go ahead and play that. So now you can see that it's no longer inverted. Now it's stay, uh, staying the correct way, but uh, there is no ragdoll going on. So what we can do is uh, right here over in the duration in each delay node, it's set to zero. So let's set it to something like, uh, let's say 0 0.1. And I'll just copy that value and set it for the other two durations. And let me go ahead and play. If you find something wrong, you can always reset this. And you can see that right now it's uh, bending and return, returning to the uh, original position after a certain while. Now you can control that delay using this duration over here. So the more duration you have, the more time it takes for the joints to return back to the original position. So you can see that when he moves his head left or right, uh, the, the object also goes in the same direction. So uh, that's not uh, you know visually correct. So in order to fix that, we can just uh, add in a negate node. So let's f find the axis in which that joint rotates in first of all. So I think that's rotating in the Y axis. So let's find the patch for the Y axis. So this is the pair that controls the Y axis rotation. So let's go ahead and add a negate node. And what this will do is it will just invert the values that come out of the subtract. And I'll just plug that back in the negate, I mean pack. So if I just reset this and play, you can see that right now it uh, goes against the direction of the head rotation. And that looks much more visually realistic. Now I'll just show you quickly how you can do this without any uh, rigs or joints. Now if you don't know how to rig, that's okay, it, it's still doable. And what you can do is just basically import the rotational value of your object. And I'll just find the uh, actual object, I think uh, it's probably this one. And over here, I'll just import the rotation and set it up like that. We still need an add node, so let me go ahead and uh, copy the rotational value. So you can see right now if I just uh, play, you can see it still uh, does that ragdoll kind of effect. But for this, uh, make sure that your pivot point is already set at the base of your object so that it uh, rotates around that point. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So if you found the video helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon. Thank you to all my patrons for sticking around and for the continued support. Make sure to share this video around with your fellow AR creators so that you can help them make better and realistic filters. Now that's pretty much it and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.